All right, so I guess everybody wants to see this awesome little piece of equipment, which ALGCOM has been so kind as to send to me uh, to check out because I guess uh, I do a lot of electronic stuff. So uh, this thing kind of answers a lot of questions, a lot of uh, problems that we have had in the industry with uh, powering sites. One of the biggest benefits is that it's got SNMP monitoring, and you can actually download the uh, plugins for it from the manufacturer's website or instructions i guess you could say for monitoring it with dude or zabbix which is kind of cool so yeah let's open it up <laughs> i've been waiting to crack this little bad boy okay so what's in the box what's in the box okay let's put this aside so we've got a probe a thermal probe we've got some ears and some uh connectors here some uh fork connectors and of course the pièce de résistance is the power supplies module itself and a little tiny power cord but that doesn't really matter because you can just add your own i think the reason why this one's so short is that uh you just plug it into the bus bar on your uh rack okay let's see here all right so here's the unit i already had it open by the way pretty cool to look at so you've got two outputs battery connector 15 amp fuse uh, for this is actually the 10 amp model. Uh, yeah, 40 volt 10 amp. Ethernet connection, reset button, thermal sensor, uh, and then here's your settings for your uh, charge current and your battery type. So I've got this one set for uh, AGM or VRLA. Uh, valve regulated lead acid. I believe stationary is just re uh, re referring to flooded lead acid. So we've got AC LED, charging LED, discharging LED, over temperature and overload. Um, and on the back here, <coughs> or bottom, it will show you the Z default IP, which is 192.168.1.50. And username is admin, password is admin. Uh, press reset during 10 seconds for resetting the standard configurations. All right, cool. So you hold the um, reset button for 10 seconds. Oh no, I voided the warranty on it. Oh, really? That's, that's such an atrocity, is it not? Let's flip it over for a sec. Aha. I'm going to check my camera. All right. So, and we're just about to roll over to three minutes. So I want to make sure that it doesn't bugger. And we're still recording. I found the mystery of why my camera buggers up. It's because apparently when it's running the HDMI, HDMI monitor as well at the same time, uh, it's too much for it, and it times out after three minutes. So, um, yeah. Let's open it up. Whoop. Cool, let's put that aside. So what do we have here? This is actually a pretty well-built board. So the brains here, the SNMP uh, module for monitoring and possibly controlling, I haven't logged into the web interface yet, so we'll do that in a minute. Um, it's kind of on its own. It's like, there's like an eight pin connector here. Is it eight? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pin uh, go header going from this board over to this board. I'm assuming for all the monitoring of this. Um, let's see here. And then there's a power supply for this specifically. You can see your fan leads here going over to these two fans over here. Dual fans blowing against the um, aluminium block here that all the FETs are on, the power FETs and the uh, rectifier. <coughs> Here's a, um, a thermal, is it a thermal couple? I think it's a thermal couple right there. NTC 666. Why do I see 666 everywhere? I don't know. So that's right there. We've got some nice Japanese capacitors here. Very nice caps. Um, there's some attention to detail. I mean, like, this thing looks like it's mostly uh, uh, pick and place. But, I mean, like, there's some little human added fine touches. Like, some beautiful um, automotive silicone on the uh, header here to uh, hold this cable in place and there's some of these caps here to hold the caps in place and a little bit of extra just for this fuse holder here just to give it a little bit of strength right this is yeah this is good i like this um you'll notice that the ground is lifted on this and instead there is a ground on the back of the unit which i shall put the cover back on and show you because this is an isolated power supply that's because you can use it in a plus or minus 48 volt environment and it will work. Little fuse here on the back. There you go. Now this has a really nice enamel. Um, it's a really nice enamel coating on here as well. Uh, we've got some duct tape here. Where's the duct tape go? Let me just see here. Duct tape. 
the duct tape this is over top of the transformer here, uh, the capacitor here, and part of the other transformer right here. So it's just because these guys are so high up, it's just a little bit of extra protection. So once again, some really cool little um, piece of attention to detail here. So there we go, start recording. Awesome. <coughs> now, <coughs> look at this as well. Look at this board. Where's a pointy tool? I need a pointer. Let's use this paintbrush that's purple. That'll work, purple paintbrush. Yeah, jam it up my nose. Um, so look at this. There's actually, uh, here's the AC section right here. And uh, it's kind of an international uh, standard that uh, the better power supplies have a actual isolation, uh, like physical isolation between the AC and the DC side. So right here we've got a cut. We've got a coupling capacitor. And is that an opto? Uh, maybe an opto isolator there? What's the, it's a, I can't quite find the exact code for it, but anyway, so this is what's bridging it across here. So this is the DC side, and this is the DC side on the AC side board. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, some cool stuff here. There's actually a cut in the board here to ensure that we don't have any uh, AC bridging. Um, there's a nice fat gap right along here. I love that. And in fact, let me grab my flashlight. <sighs> Coat pocket. All right, it's none of that coat pocket. I'm gonna grab the other coat pocket. Now, let's shine some light under the board. Turn these guys off for a second so we can see a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna put, yeah, look at that. So that's a big, fat, half-inch gap, like right along here, isolating the AC board from the DC board. It's beautiful. Very, very nice. All right. There we go. Let's check on the camera again. Mm -hmm. Cool. A little bit off here. All right. <clears throat> so that's properly isolated. Uh, now, something else which I've noticed here, which is beautiful. Look at these metal oxide varistors here. A couple of little caps here. So this actually has built-in surge suppression built into it. So you could probably plug this into almost any power supply and not have to worry as much about it getting blown up as much about getting blown up. Don't worry as much about getting blown up, okay? Um, let's see here, these are our current sensors here. I'm assuming that they're for output A and output B. I'm just going to assume that. Uh, the relay here, I'm assuming that that relay is for either uh, the charger or the, well, we'll find out in a minute. Uh, where does it go? That looks like it's right for the battery. So that's probably a battery disconnect, a low voltage disconnect uh, um, relay right there. And this is all regular power circuitry stuff. Uh, usually these things step up and operate at a higher voltage, somewhere around 400 volts at an extremely high frequency, and then they're converted down to DC, then runs through the circuitry. It just makes it more efficient, okay? And uh, that's how the charging circuits work. But we're not talking about charging circuits. We're looking at this board. Now, this to me, I have been foaming at the mouth to get my hands on one of these because this looks like a pretty badass product. Um, the only thing that I feel uncomfortable about, uh, it is an isolated power supply, but we don't have a ground to the chassis, so you, of course you have to ground the chassis to your equipment ground. Not a big deal, okay? That's minor, okay? And again, isolated power supply. Now, the other thing I really don't like is that regardless of how well built it is, this does not have uh, safety uh, certifications. There's no CSA, no UL, uh, no ESA. Uh, those are our um, uh, safety uh, authorities up here, like underwriters and Canadian Safety Authority and Electrical Safety Authority, and there's no CE for European. These things come from Brazil. But, uh, you know, I mean, so clearly these guys know what they're doing. I mean, like, this is not like we're talking about something really janky, like, you know, an Aleppo uh, power bank that's made in a very dangerous way that may potentially catch fire <clears throat> or electrocute people. No, this is a really well-built unit. So that would be the only thing that I can really, my only qualm is that there's really no, uh, no safety certifications on it. But looking at the way it's built and the care to the detail of the board, I mean, like this is a really nice unit. You can see that, like there was a lot of effort put into the design of this. It's very well built. Even the solder, like this is such a clean board. 
I mean, I'm looking at all the solder joints here. I'm not seeing your random solder ball that you'll find in like Ubiquity Radio or um, in a Natonic switch or anything like that, right? I'm talking about the board has been like scrubbed. So this has probably been put in a, a uh, washing machine of some sort and they have scrubbed this board of every little tiny contaminant before it actually was assembled. And they have probably stringently tested these things looking at it this way. And then of course the finer detail of adding the automotive silicone here just as an added measure to secure caps and to make sure that the headers don't come unplugged. I mean like even over here on the um, uh, thermal pile or thermocouple. Yeah, I mean like everything here is just really well built. I really like what I'm looking at. So the lack of safety certification, mm, it's not something I would really worry too much about. It's more or less like, um, eh, I'm going to hem and haw. I wouldn't let it worry you because there's tons of people out there that are using these things and they're great. And look at the quality of the components that are actually used in this board. The actual attention to detail for the cleanliness of the board and the soldering. Like this wave soldering is just beautiful. Uh, it's just so well built. I mean, like, ugh. I like it. So, I mean, like, I'm pretty excited to have one of my HoloLens to play with. So now, um, let's plug it in and see what it does. <laughs> so I want to do, I want to hook up the batteries first this time because I noticed a cool little feature. Watch this. Okay, so, um, 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 I need something to lean this against. Uh, huh. One second. Bear with me here. Oh, a cordless drill. This might work. Yeah, that works. Okay, cool. So let's hook up the battery first. All right, we're going to hook up the negative first. There we go. And off to my left, you will see that I have four 12-volt batteries. One, two, three, four. Ha, ha. Four batteries. So this is actually running in a 48-volt configuration. Uh, it goes 13.5 and then 27 and then 54 volts. That's typically the step up when you're going 12, 24, 48. Uh, okay, so we're going to be running at about 54 volts on a float charge with these batteries. So I've got this little meter here, which is kind of handy, showing you your voltages and stuff. So let's hook that up. All right, now watch this. This is pretty cool. Let me just check on the camera again. I don't trust you, camera. I might get a Panasonic Lumix, actually, if I ever have any money. Um, so we can start this by... Poking. I like that. We can poke this. Oh, something went wrong. What has went wrong? Oh, we popped the breaker. Hold on a second. That shouldn't have happened. All right. Let's fix that breaker. Let's try that again. See, that's why I like to have a fuse. See, I put a breaker in this case on my battery bank. Okay, so we've got our negative goes under negative. Let's try this one more time and see what happens. I'm not sure what happened there. It actually worked a minute ago, so there's, it's kind of bizarre. Here we go. And let's look up our positive. Okay, let's try that again. But first, I don't see anything wrong here. There's no reason why this should have popped like that. Um, positive and negative. Everything's hooked up the way it should be. Let me just confirm that. White is positive. Yeah, batteries are hooked up properly. So let's just try that one more time. Maybe it's something funny happened here. All right. And that popped it again. Isn't that interesting? I wonder why that's happening. Let's talk, try a slightly different approach. Okay, so we've got the power hooked up to the battery terminals here. All right. Let us hook up some AC. Let's see what happens. And just, I don't think, there's no contamination on the board. Everything's connected properly. I don't see any reason why it should have faulted. So we've got some AC going to this thing now. I'm going to disconnect the batteries for a second here just to be on the safe side. Yeah, this thing should have started up. I wonder why it's not working. Oh, hold on. 
the loose fuse holder on here. Let's plug her back in. All right, there we go. Now it's starting. All right, let's set the batteries up again. That's kind of weird. In fact, just to be on the safe side, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that positive and negative are labeled properly. I'm going to grab a meter. Um, meter. All right, let's test this here. Okay. Um... Let's look at our... Um, I'm going to pop this fuse. Let me just check the fuse for a second. Let me get this thing out. No, the fuse is intact. Okay, that's fine. All right, let's hook the batteries up one more time and see what happens. Okay. Red goes to positive. goes to negative. There we go, and the batteries are now active, and they're charging. That is really weird, because you know what's funny is I already tested this, and it seems to have worked perfectly, so I'm not sure why it faulted, like dead fault on this, unless it was something to do with the relay. Um, whatever. We're experimenting. I may have done something wrong. If somebody saw me do something wrong, by all means, tell me in the comments below, which I'm sure you will. All right, so now we're charging at 54.4 volts. That's a little bit spicy for me for AGM. Uh, I'm more of a, let's keep it as close to uh, the float voltage as possible and no higher. That's just me, okay? Um, so I prefer to keep this at about uh, 54 on the dot, but it's a little bit high. Uh, as long as it doesn't hit 55, we should be okay. So we're going to plug in the thermal sensor here thermal probe, butt probe, all right, goes in the center port here, and we are going to just slide that into the batteries, which is what you do if you hook this thing up anyway. I will be doing a video, by the way, uh, installing this in a cabinet setting so that you guys can see what it's like. All right, so this is now hooked up. I'm just going to uh, trip the fuse here and see if it doesn't explode. Okay, so that's now saying discharging. So the AC has now faulted. Our voltage has dipped to 52.2, and the unit is still running fine. Okay, so now let's hook up our AC again. There we go, we're back on. And we should see this thing switch over. There we go, AC charging. Cool, let's get some handy little LEDs on here. All right, so it's pretty straightforward. Now, let's connect the load. Um, actually, the load that I have here is, uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, I have got a that PoE switch that I modified a little while ago right here. So what I've got is, it's 48 volt. Uh, it'll take 54, of course. And then I've got um, two Cisco access points there, kindly uh, donated by Mr. Uh, uh, Joe Miller. And... Uh, I've got a M2 feed horn on a adapter here. So let's hook this thing up and put some load on this thing now. All right. So now something to keep in mind here. It doesn't necessarily have positive and negative per se, but there is kind of a cheat here where it says negative. Um, the zero volt, because this is actually a negative 48 volt power supply, uh, the zero volt will actually be your positive and the 48 will be your negative. So let's just look at that, verify that. Um, always err on the side of caution, just in case, because you know what? Nobody is an expert, and if somebody says they're an expert, run like hell. All right, let's plug it in. Yeah, there we go, 55 volts on the dot, if I hook that up. So keep that in mind, guys. This thing is floating at 55 volts out. So if you're using anything that says it cannot handle up to 57 volts, be careful. All right. Let's hook up some load. Okay, so I'm going to hook up the load A. There we go. And 
Sparky Spark. Yes, okay. Our PoE is coming online. I've got three devices, so Cisco AP, Cisco AP, and M2 feed horn. Awesome. All right, now, that load is active. Let's kill the power again. Okay, now watch the voltage here. Oh, look at that. So we're at running at 20 watts right now, 21. The voltage dipped down to 51 so far. So we are declining. If you want to see your state of charge, I will be explaining that in my 48 volt cabinet video when I use this to actually build a cabinet enclosure. But right now, just look, you can see that it's dipping. We've got 20 watts here. All right, and uh, yeah, so that's working. And again, I've got the charge voltage for the battery set at three amps on the front here. You can do one, three, or five amps. And I'm not sure, but if you check the manual, I think you do variants of that. You can like go like eight amps or like six amps, whatever. So let's plug this back in. Cool beans. All right, and here's our switch over right here. There we go. 51. It's starting to top it up again. Okay, so now let's hook up a computer. I want to see the web interface on this. Meh. Put you over here on the batteries. So now let's hook up a, uh, let's see here, Ethernet cable. And we'll plug this guy in here. All I remember shutting this down, but whatever. <laughs> because I'm cool like that. Don't blue screen, little animal. There we go. So, why did I just do that? Because I want to show you guys exactly what I'm doing. Let's see how the camera's doing. Still recording, 2309. Yay. Alright, so let's get some Chrome running on here. Ugh. Just load. Load, load, load. I've got so many of these, but uh, I'd love to have a faster one. Okay, here we go. So we're into the uh, interface for it. So we go into the home page there. No break SNMP power supply. Booyah. This thing is sweet. Okay, so we got our firmware version, UPS firmware version, build date. So this is July 25th, 2019, which means this has probably got the latest uh, firmware on it. Let's hit status now and see what's going on. This is so friggin' cool. Power outage in the last 10 minutes. No. Whew, we can change that. Operation mode AC line. Output voltage 53.99, which means that the calibration is out by about... Uh, nearly, nearly five, well, it'll be 53 to 54, about eh, 500 millivolts, I guess. Um, yeah, roughly. So the calibration on the interface versus the uh, output on this is actually out a little bit because you see 53.99 there. And... Over here, you can see clearly 54.48, and I did verify that I calibrated this before the video, okay? 54.4, 54.01, so it's just a little bit out, okay? And a little bit of extra voltage won't really hurt it necessarily, but it can definitely shorten the life of your batteries. Okay, again, nothing big. This thing's still kick-ass, okay? I'm not knocking it at all. I'm in love with it. Um... And no, they're not paying me to say that, literally. They wanted me to be as brutally honest about this thing as possible, which is why I got the opportunity to review it. Um, and I don't want to say much bad about it, because I really do think that this is going to solve a lot of problems for a lot of people. Um, here we go. Alarms. Let's see what we got here. AC power, yes. Battery charging, yes. Battery discharging, no. Overheat, no. Overload, no. Fan alarm, a. No. Oh, let's try a fan alarm. Doopy doopy doop. Oh, the fan failed. And we've got a red light blinking right here on over temperature. Awesome. Okay, so let's refresh this and see what it does. Oh, alarms. 
Fan B alarm, sweet. Look at that, a fan failed and it's notifying us. And if you look at the fan leads here, by the way, these are PWM. So you've got uh, black, negative, red, positive, and your PWM lead right there, or uh, your fan speed lead, I guess I should say. So you can actually monitor the speed with this. So this thing actually monitors the fans. That is so handy, especially if a rodent or a lizard or anything else crawls into the fan somehow and like screws it up. Let's unplug the other fan now. This is cool. Oh, look at that. Ha! It updated on the interface. That's cool. Now, let's try to kill the AC and see what happens. Here we go. AC power, no. Battery charging, no. Battery discharging, yes. Oh, and if I go to status now, I should be able to see the current. So we've dipped down to 51.8. Output current is 0 0.02 amps. I don't know if that's entirely true. Uh, because... This guy here is actually drawing 390 milliamps right now. As you can see, it's drawing 20 watts. So that output current is inaccurate because of these guys here. Um, so that would be, oh, hold on a second. Oh, no, 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 I was misreading that, guys. I was totally misreading that. Power outage, no break, output voltage, output current. Look down here, charger status. There, I was just looking in the wrong place. Okay, good. So maybe that calibration isn't as off as I thought. Because look, down here, battery voltage 50.54. This is a charger status. So I think it's just kind of like not arranged in a very intuitive manner. So that's just me being stupid. Get used to that because I'm not perfect. All right, so now we're starting to see a closer uh, alignment of voltages. 50.8, 50.25 here. Uh, current, uh, still 21 watts down here 0 0.32 amps discharge see the negative there so we're seeing 0 0.42 so it's about 100 milliamps off not a big deal that's literally just an adjustment of these um, uh, shunts okay and here's our temperatures internal temperature 27 external 25 so the external will be this bad boy here let's uh, make this thing a little bit warmer Actually, I don't know if they'll do that fast enough. Let's just stick that in the old armpit. There we go. That's that's what doctors do to measure your temperature, right? So we should see that climb a little bit. 26 Celsius. Now, the tip of this probe also has a rubber jacket on it. It's got some rubber sheathing, which protects it so that you can stick it down by the batteries and not have to worry about uh, potentially using lead acids, uh, flooded lead acid batteries that leak on the probe. But yeah, look at that, 31 direct degrees Celsius. Let's see if that hits human body temperature, which I totally forgot what that is. I think it's like, what is it, like 36 or something, 33? Mm, yummy. Uh, 34. 35. I'm trying hard here. Apparently my body temperature is 35 Celsius, okay. There we go. Mmm, strawberries. There you go, you can go back in there. Alright, so that's cool. That's very cool. Now let's see about commands here. What does commands do? Oh, we're gonna have to log in. Hello? There we go. What the hell happened there? M-I-N. A D M I N. There we go. Reset output. Send command to reset the UPS outputs. Each command sent keeps the corresponding output off for one minute before restarting it. Sending the command can only be repeated after one minute. Firmware update. Okay, cool. So we can reset the outputs on this. Let's try that. All right. So I've hit reset. So the outputs on here should go offline. But they're not. So I'm looking here. Actually, I should have that like that, really. Look, can you guys see that now? Let me see. Um, there you go. You guys can see that. So um, apparently the power has not gone off to this, which is on output A. Uh, this page will be redirected automatically in six seconds. Let's see what happens. Okay, so, um, the restart command didn't appear to work. 
And again, I, I haven't played with this at all. I just pulled it out of the box. I'm just playing with it now on camera for you guys. Let's try one more time. Actually, let me move, move it over to output B now. Whoops. That didn't, that wasn't nice. Okay, let's see here. Ah! Okay, so that's on output B now. Let's try resetting the output again. Okay. I'm not seeing the device go offline. I'm not sure which output it's referring to, unless it's referring to the battery, maybe? I don't know. We're going to have to get to the bottom of that. What output is it? Because, re re like, this is output A, this is output B. And if I'm hitting reset, it should be resetting that. Just intuitively, right? Let's hit uh, F5 here. Okay, that still hasn't restarted yet. Now, how are the outputs managed here? Because this goes straight down through here. Um, okay, so this shunt here is strictly for the battery. And it looks like output A and output B go through this shunt here. So there's only the two uh, current shunts current resistors. Now this comes back down through here, so I'm assuming that these FETs here are the on and off control for the outputs. Okay, still not doing anything. This thing still hasn't turned off yet, and that's what I thought I was doing. Um, what's going on with this web page now? Okay, so it doesn't appear and maybe I'm not doing this right. That could be the problem, is that I don't understand this completely. But um, it looks like the output reset um, doesn't actually reset the outputs on here. So that's just a bug, and that can so easily be fixed. Um, that can That's just simply a software patch, okay? Easy peasy. Let's go to user config. Oh, what's going on here? Sorry, my USB cable came unplugged. Refresh. Oh, you bugger. Here we go. Okay, user config. Let's see what's in here. Uh, oh, set new user credentials. Great. Network config. Oh, cool. Okay, so you can set this for DHCP. No. Um, MAC address. Host name. That's handy. Um, yeah, I like it. SNMP configs. Great. So we can have three communities in here. And look. Uh, SNMP V2. Sweet. So there's a lot of software in this little bad boy that can do things, okay? These guys can change things up easy. Uh, Watchdog configs. <coughs> cool. Um, set up the outputs, uh, act, outputs act according to IP address monitoring. Three attempts will be made before sending the reset command to the configured output. Ping timeout is set to 5 seconds. The period between each ping is set in minutes. The information below is the current settings. Enter new values to change them. Cool. Okay, so this thing is a ping watchdog. Sweet! Alright, so all in all, um, looking at the basics of this system, um, I'm really kind of happy with it. Um, it's got some minor bugs. Nothing that I would say are deal breakers at all. Uh, it, without the safety certification, I mean, like, the worst that can happen is if some butt gets pissed off at you and reports you to your local safety inspector. You know, that sort of stuff. So, well, that's interesting. I just restored the power, the AC, to this thing just now, and it took the whole unit offline. I wonder why that happened. Oh, I wonder if that reset only works on the AC. Shit, let's test that. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, okay, this is going to be cool. Okay, hold on. Eh, work. There we go. Let's try resetting the output again. Let's see if it's. it might be uh, resetting the whole unit. 
yes, that's how it works. So that reset command resets the whole unit when it's connected to AC. It doesn't seem to work in DC mode. Cool. We're learning things here, folks. Yay. Eh, and this, well, if you don't think this is a very professional review, then you haven't seen my other videos, because I am being completely honest with you, no filters, no bars held. I am examining this as somebody who's never touched one before, and I'm not sugarcoating it, I'm not lying or pretending to know things, and I am not uh, one of these shysters who's gone in and completely researched it and then said afterwards, oh yeah, check this out, blah, blah, blah. No, this is... The same shit that you'd be doing if you took this thing out of the box in your own lab, popped it on the bench, and then showed everybody else at the shop. That's what we're doing right now, folks. That is... You know what? This is kind of one of the best ways to learn about something, man. So we got some fun stuff going on here we can play with. So yeah, that's the basic functionality. And, get this, okay? Um, let me see here. Uh, I'm going to re-enable Wi-Fi on this. Which means i got to ditch this. Okay, so we're going to get off of here for a second, okay, folks? And I'm going to connect to the Wi-Fi. And we're going to go to ALGCOM's website. And I'll show you the... Come on. Get an IP address. This this part here isn't a very good uh, advertisement for my Microptic uh, APs at all. Eh... Connect. Do I have internet now? Is it working? Yes. Well, we're gonna have to chalk that one up to Windows sucking. Okay, so let's just let's kill this now. So we don't necessarily need it. I'm just gonna put this aside. Let's disconnect our batteries. Sensor and AC. There. All right, so now that we're in here, uh, let's see here. So we're going to, we want to go to English. All right, DC and UPS converter. ALG has got some pretty cool stuff, folks. I, I'm really excited to be working with these guys. Here we go. I hope my hat's not in the way. You know, I'm kind of stupid, so. Here, let's put my hat on backwards like one of those 90s rappers. Um... Did we get to... Oh, here we go. DC UPSs. Um, 48 volt. This is the one we're playing with right here. Alright, so the reason why I'm going to this page, by the way... Oh, and by the way, these are the applications they suggest. Um, automation, energy, optical fiber, internet, digital radio, security, telephony, VHF, UHF. I should actually throw this thing on an oscilloscope and see how clean the power is on it, but we just opened a lab, as you guys know, and we're doing electronics repairs, so my oscilloscope, my main one, is over at the other lab. If we want to look at how clean the power is, I'll just do another video uh, tagged onto the DC plant video that I'm going to do for this guy, okay? So, um, let's see here. 50, 60 hertz, 100 to 240 volts AC. Uh, power factor 95, eh. Uh, let's see here. The big thing is, is check this out. Um, where did I find it? Oh. Downloadable files. This is what I wanted to get at, okay? Check that out, folks. I love this. Clearly, these guys are Zabbix fans. Zabbix is a monitoring tool for networks, servers, and services designed to monitor availability, user experience, and quality of services. Click here to download the standard MIB and template for Zabbix 3.2 to be used in the Alcom DC UPS SNMP. And I do believe I saw one for Dude around here somewhere. I'm sure I did. Either that or I've been on cheap drugs, which I don't know how I would do that because I don't typically do drugs. Um, yeah, and of course, here's the data sheet, which is actually just the a manual and overview, right? Cool. I am 100% positive that I saw something about the dude in here. Um, there is a little tutorial in here that tells you how to set this thing up in the dude. Why am I obsessing over that right now? Well, if you're a smaller ISP at less than 1,500 uh, physical devices on your network and your core, 
Uh, the dude can usually do the trick quite nicely if you have it on its own uh, beefed up VM, okay? So, with that being said, um, this thing has a little tutorial of how to set it up in your monitoring software. So that's pretty friggin' awesome, if you ask me. Okay, here we go, electrical safety. Let's see this part here. <coughs> okay, input output protection class. Let's see here, one, leakage current. Eh, 0.2 MA, that's not bad. Uh, let's see here, double isolation or reinforced isolation. Uh, needs ground connection, of course, on the back of the unit, I showed you that. 100 volts AC, 60 hertz to 264 volts AC, 60 hertz. Um, isolation, phase and neutral for output, phase and neutral for ground, output to ground, 5 mega ohms. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, it's got all your specs here. Somebody ran a mega on it, clearly. That's that's really important. Um, by the way, megas are great if you want to screw with your coworkers because you can fry them when they're on a ladder or something. It's really good fun. Just don't do it to somebody with a weak heart, otherwise you're a complete creep. Um, yeah, uh, there's quite a bit in here. And for those of you out here who are naughty enough to say, well, there's no English. Dude, you know what? Just don't be like that, seriously, because, like, uh, where to put the box? The box is in Spanish, okay? But that doesn't mean anything, because almost everything else on here is in English. So don't whine about that. That's nothing to whine about, okay? So... What do I think of this product now? Because, you know, I'm starting to do product reviews, so I'm learning how to do product reviews. Um, personally, I think it's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm stoked as hell about this thing. Uh, in my opinion, I think this is the uh, cat's knees. Ugh, the bee's ass. And I think that this thing has a real uh, promising uh, home with wisps, plenty of wisps. And if you ask wisps who are using those for their opinion on them operating the field, you're probably going to get a good word back about how they're performing. Um, this is just, this is solid. I am confident you could shoot this thing. It would probably take a bullet pretty good. Ground on the back, fuse. Yeah. Your basic instructions here. I mean, it's a really well-built unit. I like it. It's The functionality is great. And uh, I will be building a DC cam that just like I did in the 24 volt video with this thing in the coming week or so. I might even do it tomorrow if I get a chance. It's just... Things are kind of weird right now. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to get this video out uh, sooner than later because uh, I know LGCom wanted me to get this done and post it for you guys so you can all see what it's about. Uh, they wanted the good and bad posted. So that goes to show that that company, LGCom, have real integrity to have somebody like me go out there and uh, give you an honest review of what I think of a product. So, you know, props to LGCom. These guys are pretty solid and they're out there for us. They're here batting for us, really. Um, so yeah, I don't think I can really say much more. Otherwise, I'm just, you know, spewing nonsense. Um, so I'm gonna put the screws back in this thing and get it prepped up for my little uh, cabinet video. And uh, yeah, that's about all I can say right now. If you think I missed anything, any details about this or any inspection on this or breakdown or if there's anything else you'd like to see in videos that I do like this, please leave it in the comment section below and let me know what you think because I'm always learning. And I'm trying to make these videos as good as possible for you guys, okay? Just remember that. And um, yes, remember, I'm operating on no budget. So everything that I do is either thanks to donations from guys like you, whether you're sending me equipment or um, helping me out with information or sending me money um, to help fund the videos. Uh, other than that, everything else just comes out of my own pocket for these videos. I'm literally just doing them to help you guys out, I'm not making anything on that. So anyway, um, you guys enjoy. This is a pretty swanky little unit. I'm going to put the screws back in right after the video because I don't want to hurt this little baby. And, uh, yeah, ripping off the warranty void sticker was pretty awesome because the company told me to. What company tells you to do that? Well, you know the intended purpose. So, everybody, thank you for watching. Have a great night. Again, comments, suggestions, whatever. I'm not perfect. I'm learning how to do these videos and that. So, give me my suggestions. All right. Have a great night, guys. And, uh, bye.